Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for how to publish and secure applications in the Docker Enterprise platform. Our speakers today are Javier Ramirez. Javier is an IT architect uh, infra and infrastructure technical leader at Hopla Software. He's bringing 15 years of, exper of experience in enterprise systems monitoring and performance management to today's topic. And Javier says that everything changed for him about three years ago when he discovered, he started playing with containers. He is now a DCA certified instructor and Docker captain. Our other speaker today is Guillaume Morini. Guillaume is a sales engineer at Docker where he helps customers with their container journey. He brings seven years of experience from Cisco with him to his talk today. So Javier and Guillaume, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. So welcome to our talk about Docker container networking and we will focus today on how to publish and secure application in the Docker Enterprise platform. So you have our contact if you need to uh, yeah. talk to us after the talk, do not hesitate to tweet uh, and we will answer uh, any question. We still have five minutes at the end of the talk also to answer your question. The goal of this session is really to uh, take back from the, strat from the start and go into basic Kubernetes networking concepts. Then we will dig into Docker Enterprise Platform and how we choose to integrate with Calico uh, project uh, to provide network and security inside this platform. Then Javier will present how we can publish application inside our cluster of Docker Enterprise to the outside world. We will finish with some key takeaways and, as I said, a few question and answer. So let's dig into this. Let's start with Kubernetes co connectivity basics. Who in the room knows the networking inside Kubernetes? Not so much people. So to, to explain a little bit, we have five different concepts which are really key to understand when you talk about network security uh, inside Kubernetes. The first one is around pod networking. As you may know, in Kubernetes, the unit of deployment is a pod. A pod is a collection of containers that share the same IP address. So they share the same IP address and they share the same network connection to the other pods. To provide this, Kubernetes has decided to provide an abstraction called CNI, Container Network Interface. And this CNI is only an abstraction. It should be implemented by a network plugin. As you may know, uh, pods in Kubernetes are very dynamic and transient. This means that you can schedule up and down new pods, uh, reschedule it uh, if a node goes down, and so on. So to access your application, you need to have a static, well-defined way of accessing your application or your services. And in Kubernetes, it is based on an object called Kubernetes Services. This object is often implemented inside kubeproxy, and it helps you to use this static entry point to address a dynamic backend through the pods. The third object is, by default, in Kubernetes, every pod could talk to every other pod. And to secure this, we need to have some tools to be able to adjust to this dynamic behavior. So we use an object called network policy. The idea is that as pods are dynamic, IP address change and are not predictable, we need to uh, not rely on static web firewall rules, or network policy, uh, st very static. So IP tables, rules, and so on. So to provide that, uh, Kubernetes use the concept of network policy that will adjust dynamically to your application by listening the Kubernetes API and the Kubernetes change. It will implement this network policy and provide a dynamic micro-segmentation tools uh, inside Kubernetes. Fourth object is kubedns. It is used to access your services and your application by name instead of IP address, because IP address is often difficult to, to uh, remember. So kubedns is the DNS server inside Kubernetes, and it helps you to translate name to IP. The last object is ingress. The ingress helps you to access uh, your application from outside your cluster and it is used mainly for HTTP and HTTPS traffic to provide uh, um, HTTPS offload, to provide uh, route-based uh, context uh, routing, uh, and so on. 
This is a typical Docker Enterprise deployment. It's composed of three different groups of nodes, three different roles. We have at the top the manager nodes. The manager node is really the brain of the cluster. It's where are the swarm managers and the Kubernetes masters. And it's really um, the entry point of the cluster. It, relies, it supports all the authentication, authorization, and so on. On the bottom right, you have the DTR nodes. The DTR nodes are the registry of your cluster where you store your container image. And on the bottom left, you have the worker nodes where you host your container applications. Your application containers are executed on these nodes. So the idea of the Docker Enterprise is to provide a, a well-defined platform really fit to enterprise and automated, uh, easy to manage. Inside Docker Enterprise, you have both Swarm and Kubernetes. And regarding Kubernetes, we need to integrate, as I said, a network plugin. So we decide to, to partnership with Tigera, the company behind Calico, to provide a fully automated solution already configured and installed when you deploy Docker Enterprise. This is a, a well-known solution because it was proven at scale. It's already deployed uh, widely uh, in the community. And it also integrates with all the major cloud providers. It helps us to provide a policy-driven network security, which means some security which is linked to the dynamicity of Kubernetes. So it's really well adapted to Kubernetes. One typical example of network policy is to provide something called zero trust security. So really a, a way to go to production with Kubernetes. By default, as I said, in Kubernetes, every pod could talk to every other pod. And when you, when you are doing some production environment and you have some different teams with different level of uh, SLA, you need to uh, secure this and help them to uh, isolate things. So one example is, for example, uh, a segmentation in terms of environment. You want your dev environment to not access the production database, so you can use network policy to do that. There is also uh, people that want to constrain team inside a namespace. So if you want to do namespace isolation, it's a good use case. The third one is when you use, for example, some microservice architecture, and that you want to securize your architecture. You do not want to have any uh, microservice who has access to any other microservice. You already have a well-defined architecture in terms of microservice and know who talks to to. to. Uh, so this is really dynamic and a declarative way of doing policy-driven security. How we decide to integrate inside, uh, inside Docker Enterprise? It was quite easy to integrate because, uh, in fact, Calico is container-based so, uh, and run inside Kubernetes. We choose to deploy Calico node on every node as a daemon set uh, in Kubernetes. So we have one instance of Calico node running on every node of the cluster. And then you have the part at the top running on the manager node where we lie all of the Kubernetes, um, Kubernetes uh, master uh, features. Uh, we also have the Calico cube controller. This will bring the IP connectivity between pods and also, with Calico node, we will detail the node peering to be able to share information between nodes. Let's dig inside each of, your, of these components and explain a little bit how it works underneath. For the slide, to be easy to understand, I start with a fresh installation of Kubernetes and Docker Enterprise Platform. So you have on the top right the manager node with uh, our Kubernetes component, API server, scheduler, uh, and so on, and our etcd cluster to support all the uh, key value store. And on the bottom, you have the worker nodes. I choose to draw only two. Uh, that's running Kubelet, which is uh, really the agent inside uh, uh, each worker in Kubernetes. When we want to deploy your first pod on Kubernetes, what we will do is interact with the API server via, to say, I want to deploy my new app. You can use kubectl, you can use uh, Docker Enterprise web interface, you can use whatever tool you want, Elm, uh, and so on. The same, this is the same concept. The API server then talks to the scheduler to know which node is available and has sufficient resources to uh, host this pod. You will choose one, I choose the one on the left in the slide, and it will inform Kubelet, I've 
I've chosen you as a target uh, to deploy my pod, so please deploy my pod on, on, on this node. Kubelet will install the pod, and what is key for us in this presentation is the networking part. So it will provide a virtual interface to the pod to be connected to the node, to link them together. And this is provided using Calico CNI, Container Network Interface, so this interface in particular. And we don't need to just provide an interface, we need also to provide some IP address. This is why we have a module called Calico IPAM, IP Address Management. This, this pod is not scheduled, is not uh, known as an IP address, and is reachable inside the, uh, is, uh, has access to the network. But what we want to do inside Kubernetes is be able to reach this pod from any node inside Kubernetes. This is really mandatory when you do some Kubernetes networking. Any container should, uh, any node should have access to any pod. To do that, we use Calico node and IP table routing table, IP routing table, sorry. Uh, so what Calico node does is each time an IP address is assigned to a pod, it will create on the node a layer three route entry, a slash 32, if we're talking about IPv4, slash 128 if we're talking about IPv6. This routing entry will allow the node to know which virtual interface to use to access the pod. And it will do the pipe, uh, the plumbing inside the node. But we want also to have access from other nodes to this pod. And what Calico is doing, it will advertise an aggregated L3 route to the other nodes with a group of address, a subnet, that will be the subnet uh, reachable on this worker. And we'll do this dynamic maintenance of the IP address to node mapping inside the network. The next step, as I said, pods are very dynamic. You have deployed your first application, your first pod, and perhaps you want to replicate it, or perhaps your node goes down and it needs to be rescheduled somewhere else. So to access your application, you prefer to use the Kubernetes services. These Kubernetes services will be implemented inside kubeproxy, which is really a, a, an agent of Kubernetes. So what does this kubeproxy do? What, what does kubeproxy exactly? Uh, it will, in fact, interact with uh, IP table rules. Uh, it's IP table NAT rules, exactly. So it will be able to change port IP address to match the one from the services to the one, uh, uh, one of the pod. It will act as a sort of load balancer between uh, one pod and one services. So to do that, we have different type of services inside Kubernetes. I mentioned three, cluster IP, which will use a sort of virtual IP for the services. So an IP which is not really affected to something inside uh, inside the Kubernetes environment, but it's a virtual IP that is used just to attract the traffic and change it to a real IP address of a pod. The node port will use one of the ports on the node directly, and so use the IP address of the pod on a specific port uh, that we will define. Uh, it's in the range of uh, uh, 30,000. And when using this port, it will translate automatically, directly, to the IP address of the pod and the port of your application. The last services is regarding load balancer. Uh, so load balancer services is when you want to use external load balancer outside of your Kubernetes cluster. This is often used in cloud provider environment, for example, uh, on AWS when you want to use ELB, Elastic Load Balancing, which is a feature of AWS. You can outsource this feature outside of Kubernetes cluster to something like a load balancer. This is beginning to also integrate with some uh, load balancer vendor. Third object is regarding network policy. As I said, we set up something where everything could talk to everything, and we want to be able to add security on top of this. So network security inside uh, network policy, excuse me, inside Kubernetes is based on labels or selector. We will show uh, later in the demo. The idea is really to create some declarative network policy, and it is translated through Calico node 
to something like IP table firewalling rules this time. So the idea is to implement some firewalling rules using IP tables directly on the virtual interface of the pod to filter traffic incoming and outgoing. What Calico Node does is that it matches the Kubernetes API with uh, the content of the name of the pod, the labels, and so on, the namespace, and translate it to IP address dynamically on a continuing, on an ongoing basis. This translation allows to handle the IP table rules and change them when there is some event inside Kubernetes. So if a pod goes down and you need to reschedule it on another node, it will have another IP address and it will update all the IP tables rules for you. So this is really a dynamic way of doing things. I will demonstrate this using a small demo. Uh, what I will try to do is to create an application with a microservice architecture, which is based on uh, some bookstore application. The idea is to have a database where I have all my book entries, and I have multiple services to present this, uh, this, um, this database. So I will have some search pods to be able to search inside my database. I will have an API if uh, I want to have an, a mobile app, for example, that will interact with um, my database. And I will have some web simple front end to explore my database. But I, my application is not just these pods. I have multiple other services inside my application, and I also have other applications inside my Kubernetes cluster. I only want to provide access to these three different microservices and not to the rest of the world. Yeah. So, just to explain a little bit the environment, you have here my Docker Enterprise deployment, which is based on uh, a certain number of nodes, some manager. I just have one because it's a lab environment. I do not have HA, but otherwise I would have multiple. And I have some workers, some Linux and some Windows workers. Some of them are doing Swarm, some of them are doing Kubernetes. This is one of the power of Docker Enterprise to be able to mix this kind of, uh, of environment. I could also access to the same kind of information using kubectl command and list my nodes inside my Kubernetes cluster. As you may see, I do not see the, the Windows worker because it's only doing Swarm and not Kubernetes yet. This is not ready for production yet. Then, in this environment, I will try to deploy my database. So I will use a Redis database, which is convenient uh, and easy to use for this kind of application. So I've deployed it as a pod inside Kubernetes. And as you may see, there is also a service called database that will allow me to access easily to this database. Then I've prepared for you uh, a file be in the good folder. A file named Redis Allo Services. This is a YAML file, and it will describe, in fact, my network policy. So this network policy, as you may see, will be applied to a pod selector with, that will match the, my application, which is Bookstore, and only the pods which has the whole database. So I could have multiple number of pods. It could be uh, a highly available database with, uh, I don't know, three or seven containers. Uh, the same rules will apply to all of them. I only need to identify the label. So this policy will apply so on this interface of each pod of my database. And it will apply which kind of policy. It will filter ingress traffic, so traffic coming from other microservices to the database based on three different labels. So I have three different pod selectors. It could be the search microservice, the API one, or the web one. I'm applying my policy with a kubectl apply dash f on my Redis. I'm sorry. Uh, apply with only one A, it's enough, 2P, one A. 
So he will talk to, to API to, of Kubernetes, and he will transfer to Calico the feature of this to be applied. Then, what I will want to do is to test this. I, I, I'm not sure it will work, so we'll see. We'll play the demo god. As you may see, I'm launching a job inside Kubernetes just to test it on an Alpine image, but with some specific label, role equal web. And I'm trying to connect using Netcat, which is a, a networking tool to, to, to see if ports are opened, to a host which is database and a port which is the one on Redis. As you may see, the output of the job is database open, which means I can connect to my Redis database. So the traffic goes, seems to go as well. As I said, normally in Kubernetes, every pod could talk to every pod, so everything is normal. I will test now on a second environment here. This time, I've changed the label. I have the same image, the same command. I will just change the label to app equal other. And this time, as you can see, there is an operation timed out when I try to connect to the database. So the database, I can still do some service discovery, use the name and identify the IP address, uh, try to connect to it, but the network policy this time, I have dropped the traffic and it, filter, it is filtered out by the IP table source. So I could not connect using this microservice, even if it is deployed in the main, same namespace and using the same subnet IP addresses. This is it for the demo. I will now handle to Javier, we will talk about Ingress. Okay, thank you, Guillaume. Well, Guillaume has uh, been talking about how to publish, uh, uh, not to publish, just how to, to uh, um, add access of, of to our pods inside the cluster, but we need to, to, pro uh, to provide uh, access to the real world so the people can consume our, our application. So uh, in this case, we are going to talk about uh, Ingress, which is uh, something that um, it's, uh, it could add, uh, could add uh, this, uh, this kind of, uh, of feature for us because when we try to, to use um, um, cluster IP, node port, or load balancer, uh, all of them depend on external load balancer. So uh, every time we, we need uh, to deploy a new application or we have to do a big change, we have to talk with someone from communication team and tell them, oh, uh, we need to add a new backend for this application or we need to uh, deploy a new application. So you have to change everything on your corporate uh, load balancer. So, this must be uh, something quite simple. So uh, in this case, we, we will use the uh, uh, English controller. English controller uh, is, a, uh, is a piece in the Kubernetes cluster that will, be, will, will um, uh, manage uh, rules for uh, proxies. In this case, we will have uh, some kind of templating and uh, we will provide uh, rules based on um, uh, host, uh, host headers, um, paths, and uh, they will work very, very well with HTTP and HTTPS. So we're going to see uh, how it works, and uh, all of them, all the, uh, all the common features that all uh, English control will have, are, uh, for example, uh, I, I, as I told you, uh, context, uh, um, context and path uh, uh, routing, um, uh, web sockets, uh, TLS, for example, to, to provide uh, access via uh, HTTPS, so it's something that all of them we will have, and uh, we can uh, talk about uh, uh, an English controller like uh, uh, it's uh, just uh, uh, something that will run inside our cluster and do something about rules in uh, components uh, that will proxy all the traffic. So in this case, we can talk about uh, three minor components. We have the, the English controller itself, which is a uh, it's a, a piece of software that will, uh, well, in fact, it's a pod running in the, in the cluster that will be uh, watching for changes in API server. In API server. So every time it, uh, um, he realized, it realized that it, there is a change, 
uh, dynamically will prepare uh, rules, uh, well, not rules, the configuration that will, the proxy will apply. Based on what? Well, that's why we talk about uh, English resources. English resources are files, are configuration files, that will uh, have uh, all the, these rules uh, to, to be managed by the English controller. So the final uh, step is um, watch for changes, uh, take the rules, and prepare a configuration for some kind of proxy. It's good to have a default backend. It's, uh, it's uh, something that it's uh, definitely good to have because every time we have a, a traffic that don't have a rule for it, for it will go to uh, uh, now in uh, 404 error. So it's better to have a default backend. So we haven't talked about uh, the proxy itself. It's because there are two approaches for uh, the, this kind of, of, of object. We can uh, talk about what we call here uh, smart load balancers. In fact, they are uh, uh, English controllers that uh, uh, have all the components inside. So we have uh, all the, 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 this component will watch for the changes, dynamically prepare the configuration, and will do the proxy itself. So uh, in this case, we have all the uh, Nginx family because uh, Kubernetes, uh, the full proxy uh, in Nginx controller is uh, based on Nginx. We have Nginx Plus, uh, which is the, the, the uh, commercial version of Nginx that provides uh, a lot of features more than the Nginx community. So we can use both. And of course, we have traffic on HI proxy because uh, all of them, we have uh, all uh, the features uh, in one point. I mean, in the other hand, we have what we call uh, uh, load balancer controllers. In this case, we are talking about uh, this piece of software runs inside the cluster, the, the English controller, and modifies something that is outside the cluster. That's why we can, we can talk about uh, 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 load balancers that have, for example, English uh, um, F5, for example, that. Uh, we run the, the English controller inside the, the cluster and modifies the, uh, our corporate F5. So it's something that is uh, very, very uh, uh, common. And then, uh, um, of course, we have uh, English controller for uh, cloud providers. So it's, it's more or less uh, the, the common features that all, all we have in this case. And we can talk about Kong. Kong is, uh, is here because Kong itself is an API manager. And in this case, we can run, of course, uh, Kong inside the cluster. But uh, uh, the Asynchronous controller, uh, we will have this piece that will change everything in our API, API manager. So it's something that is good to have if we have a, a very dyna dynamic uh, uh, infrastructure. And of course, we have uh, our uh, framework specific. We can talk about uh, OpenShift router. And of course, uh, Docker Enterprise has uh, what it's called interlock. Why uh, we have uh, been talking about interlock? Well, in fact, we, can, we have both uh, uh, orchestrator. So um, we have uh, English controller for, for Kubernetes uh, world. And when you are uh, using Swarm, you will have to use, uh, what, what you can use, which is included in the, in the product, we have uh, interlock. An interlock is almost the same. It, it works like a, a, an English controller, but for Swarm. In this case, we have uh, three components. We have uh, what is called uh, interlock that runs uh, on managers, uh, on one manager, uh, because it's just uh, one uh, replica. And we have, uh, a, 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 this is the process that will watch for the changes in the API server, uh, in, in this case, for Swarm, of course. And uh, there's another component called uh, interlock extension. And this component will do all the configuration needed to uh, deploy on the interlock proxy, which is the, the proxy itself. And it's the, 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 the one who will reside the, the traffic and do everything on the backend. We are going to do a, a, a demo. And in this case, we're going to deploy uh, Kong and Nginx as English controller. So, we're going to, to deploy an application, uh, the smallest one, so it's just one component for, for uh, each application. Uh, I mean one component with uh, some replicas. In this case, we're going to deploy a, a red application. 
a black application with just one replica and a blue application. And we're going to apply uh, rules uh, for uh, the ingress, uh, ingress controller. I'm going to switch. Oh. Not ready. Not ready. Okay. I could do something else. Here, okay. Well, I, I'm going to connect to an external uh, node and, and uh, I'm going to, to run uh, this demo on a Docker Enterprise platform. Just with one node because I, I just need a manager with uh, UCP. Uh, if you were uh, yesterday in our workshop, we were talking about a bundle because it's the way we should run uh, applications inside uh, a cluster uh, because it will add the authorization and authentication I need to connect to the cluster. So never go to your uh, production environment and do a SSH for this. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to, to do it, and I'm going to um, load my environment. This is the bundle. We, we can check it uh, tomorrow if you can, if you want. And I'm going to deploy my application. In this case, I'm going to deploy, um, as I told you, a couple of uh, Ingress controllers. I'm going to deploy Nginx and Kong. This is my deployment for Nginx. It's a full deployment, uh, it will be very quick, run very quick. And I'm going to deploy Kong too because it takes more time. No. Um, well, let's start uh, doing things with uh, uh, my application um, on this uh, Nginx Ingress controller. I'm going to deploy a, a simple application, as I told you. It's an application, it's a, my deployment that will have, a, uh, I'm going to show, you, to, to show you what I have deployed. I have deployed, uh, in this case, uh, in, inside its own, uh, as you can say, uh, you can see, uh, uh, inside its own uh, namespace, I have my English controller, my, my Nginx English controller, and I have my application. Everything is running because it was run before, so every, uh, all the images are here, so it is, it's something that runs quite quickly. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to have a, a prepare some shortcuts here just for going uh, quick. So in this case, I'm going to prepare a, short, a shortcut for my um, English controller port. In this case, uh, I have used uh, I have used no port because this is the, the 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 port I really need to deploy on my load balancers. Yeah? So with uh, the, the the ability that uh, the feature that it will add is that we will just have a, a, a couple of endpoints. And with that, uh, uh, that endpoints, I can manage a lot of applications, doing my changes here. So I'm going to deploy this English controller. This is the, the resource. You can do a quick cut to see what is here. Okay. What does it look like? Well, in this case, as you can see, we have uh, what is uh, uh, annotations. In these annotations, we, we prepare some, something that is specific for English controller in, 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 in Nginx. So we have uh, a sticky, a sticky sessions. So we are going to, to, to see persist persistency in this example. We have uh, health checks, uh, active health checks, which is quite cool to have in our cluster. And uh, some is uh, simple write. So we're going to test everything. Uh, we have uh, the rules here. These are the, the, the kind of rules that, that we will have in Ingress, Ingress uh, resource. Uh, so we call blue example, and it will uh, guide us to, uh, for a blue um, backend. In this case, I'm going to use it. Well, I will, we can start with red one. So 
just each device. And we can see that we have, uh, I think that I, I deployed three, so it's, it's working. I can, I can do the same with uh, our um, blue one. And everything works. So I have deployed and based it on, on a host header, we are, we are guided or rooted to the, 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 the right uh, pod. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to, in this case, it's, uh, I, I prepare my application to go to a down state, although the pod is running, so it's, uh, it's perfect. I touch just a, a file, so one of my blue backends is not working. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a alive, but it's not working. Uh, so uh, I, if I, uh, sorry, if I just uh, do a couple of, we can see that in this case, we have just uh, one of them running. So the, the, the backend has been dynamically going down. So it's just, uh, it's, it's, it isn't on my uh, configuration right now. If I just remove, the one, remove this file and do a couple of checks, it will go again. So I have a new one, so my backends are now two again. We can uh, check the rewriting, which is quite uh, simple. Just this one. Oh, it's not working. Uh, oh, sorry. And paste. Is the simplest one. So uh, I asked for uh, just a blue one, but with a path about a red one. So it works, and I can HTTP with a persistent session. So in this case, every time I use the same session, I will go to the same backend. So everything works like I will expect on a external load balancer. So it works. And in this case, I'm not sure if we have enough time for uh, one minute. But uh, we, we, I think that we shall we'll finish the cookie. Yeah. OK. Um, uh, we, we, we can do a, a quick demo for Kong. But uh, I'm not sure. We have time? OK. Three minutes. OK. Nine. I think okay. that it's, it's possible. We, we have to run. So in case of Kong, we have uh, uh, in Kong namespace, you, you will have this, uh, this demo, so you can do it by yourself, so it's not a problem. So we will have a, a full uh, deployment for Kong. So in this case, we're going to check just uh, rate limiting. So in this case, we can uh, just say uh, QCTL, get all, send it Kong. CTL. I'm oh, is this Kubernetes. something that everyone yeah. works? <laughs> so in this case, we have a, a, a proxy, as we can see, a proxy and uh, a controller. Both ports, because uh, on controller, we have the, the, the admin API, uh, API, sorry. So I'm going to deploy a quick, uh, sorry. I'm going to deploy a, English controller in this case with the simplest one, so it's, it just will go to one of the paths. And then I'm going to deploy a rail limiting. I'm going to add a rail limiting plugin for this. I'm going to patch now the, the resource that I have deployed. It's something that I, I will. Um, uh, test uh, before, but we don't have enough time, so you have to uh, believe me that it works. <laughs> and, and now I, I'm going to patch uh, what it was like the simplest one, and I have patched it with, uh, with this uh, rate limiting uh, uh, for the API. So in this case, I'm going to check again, and we will see that uh, we can't access more than, I don't know, 10 in a minute. So um, uh, Kong added our um, X headers. So we have 
uh, new headers here, and we, if we have uh, more than 10 checks in a minute, oh, I'm sorry, I have, I have a, a limit uh, range uh, exceeded. So that's uh, what we have. Thanks for the demo, Ryan. Yeah. All right. Close Just one key takeaway. Uh, so to summarize our demo and uh, uh, what we explained, Docker Enterprise is really a platform that you help you to publish your application easily using either Docker Swarm or Kubernetes. Uh, supported on any choice of your infrastructure, it could be run on a remote machine on uh, your local server, and be able to uh, secure the network using some dynamic policy-based micro-segmentation. I hope you, this talk was great. If you have any question, do not hesitate to ask, and do not forget to take your survey. Thank you.